Welcome back. Asia is a bit on the back foot. Hang Seng is currently down 1%. You've got the Chinese markets under pressure. Uh, the Japanese markets have retreated close to about 0.3%. It's red on the screen for the Korean markets. But the Gift Nifty is currently suggesting a flat start. We've had six days of gains on the trot. The Nifty scaled record levels even yesterday. On an intraday basis, even 60, uh, 19,400 was scaled. But by the close of trade, it was a rally of 66 points. Though the momentum in the broader markets appear to have waned a tad bit. Today, we're going to get two important launches. So just to quickly put them on the screen. One of them is from Maruti, and that's going to take place at uh, 11.30 in Victus. This is going to be Maruti's first launch in the 20 lakh plus uh, category. So they will be foraying into that. So the street will be watching Invicto. Sorry, not Invictus. Invicto is the name. And the other one is the Bajaj Triumph launch. Uh, I think 1 p.m. Uh, at Chakan, uh, our colleague Parikshit will be there. And we will get to know more about the pricing. Um, the look is already revealed in London. But um, people out here will get to touch and feel and physically uh, see the bike and probably even test ride it. But pricing is going to be very crucial for Bajaj Triumph. Uh, let's uh, invite Devin Choksi of Kia Choksi Securities on the show now. Devin, any chance you look at Genus Power? It's a stock which has been scaling record levels yesterday. I think in the last, pull up a six-month chart, you would see in the last three months, the stock price has gone from levels of 80, 90, all the way to 140, getting large orders. And now this investment by GIC. Good morning, Rima. No, I haven't looked at this particular company, so I'll excuse myself from giving any comments. Okay. Uh, Suzlon is looking at a fundraise next week on, I think, the 7th of uh, July. Suzlon has also been re-rated. Uh, now money is coming in. Is this a stock that you've looked at? Yes, I think that's a company which is probably I think, sounding much better and looking much better now. Uh, frankly, I think the fundamentals of the company were always there. They even accept the problems. I think they ran into with the policies and thereafter, I think the indisciplined working capital management, I would think. I guess I think that part is now taken care of. Balance sheet is repaired. At the same time, the order book remains, I think, quite healthy. At least, I think, next one and a half year, two years of visibility is being seen as far as order book is concerned currently. And as I see the stability in the policy environment, I would like to believe that uh, going forward, the uh, business situation remains, I think, relatively more favorable to Suzlon than ever before. At the same time, I think capitalization in the balance sheet, I think, is sounding well because largely that is a factor which was missing in this company. And probably if that is so, then maybe uh, three, six months down the line, I think you could be seeing a higher amount of conviction happening in the uh, minds of investors from adding this particular stock in their portfolio. So, yes, I think this company looks relatively better than before. Okay, all right. Hi, Devin. Good morning. Uh, Devin, I wanted to ask you about HDFC Bank. You know, that's been the poster boy, actually, of this recent uh, rally that we've seen. After being an underperformer, it's come to the party, and now we're going to have one large entity out there. We have an update that's come in in terms of the operational performance, and it seems on a quarter-to-quarter -quarter basis, our colleague Abhishek tells us that it's not that great in terms of growth. It's just a 1% growth, and that in turn could put pressure on NIMS. How do you approach the stock from these levels? Valuation-wise, well, numerous brokerages have maintained that it's trading at a discount in comparison to its averages. So, Nigel, uh, <clears throat> considering the fact that this company has been in the process of merger with HDFC, I think that is a reason for which I think there has been a relatively slow amount of growth in the loan uh, book as I see it. Otherwise, I think the uh, on the ground, when you meet the company, you find that I think they are absolutely very, very charged up. On the contrary, I believe that corporate loan book, I think, which is growing at around 20% rate of growth for the company, and so is the case with many of the private sector lenders, corporate lenders. At the same time, uh, uh, along with that, the retail loan book also is growing at the rate of around 20%. And with the merge company, uh, even housing finance loan book, is uh, going to be at around 20% rate of growth on a yearly basis. So from a perspective of looking at this company from the long-term investment as a merge entity, I feel that I think they hold significantly large amount of uh, opportunity and the potential. The deposit base is around 16 and 17% growth as we have seen in this particular quarter numbers. In my viewpoint, I think this is going to grow further. Uh, and as a result of which, the bank looks, I think, reasonably well placed as far as I think the investment opportunity goes. Maybe I think the, it has run up in a while back, so obviously I think some amount of price correction may take place. But mm -hmm. I think that would be inviting more amount of investment interest from long-term investors. Uh, Devin, hi, morning. Uh, you know, it's all financials today. 
Uh, so two things. One is uh, Bajaj Finance. Is there more after yesterday's big move? Uh, that is uh, the first talk. And second, we had more updates, right, from Indusind Bank. They reported the pre-quarterly uh, set. We had uh, Bandhan Bank, AU Bank. Uh, anything uh, sticks out to you? Yes, Prashant. Good morning. Well, uh, I think as I was making a point, I think most of the credits uh, are growing. You know, corporate credit is growing, retail credit is growing, housing finance credit is growing. So I think that is definitely uh, influencing some of the larger players, including companies like Bajaj Finance, where uh, the respective portfolios within the uh, retail segment of lending is systematically growing for the company. In fact, I think more and more they are earning larger amount of market share in each and every portfolio of lending in the retail uh, credit book size. So obviously 30-32% kind of a growth that they are reporting. In my viewpoint, I think given the strategy that they have adopted, including the uh, the strengthened uh, omni-channel presence, I think which they have created by way of putting in the marketplace platform, which is a super app for them, is basically likely to uh, generate higher amount of loan disposal and that to at an efficient cost, which is fundamentally very important. So obviously, on one side, your loan book is growing. On the other side, the efficiency is also simultaneously taken care of, which would probably result into faster dispersal at the same time, lower cost of uh, operations. So one needs to remain bullish about this particular company and the prospects there. Mm. Uh, Devain, do stay on. We've got a management waiting by to chat with us. Tech Welcome back. Hope you're having a good morning. Well, uh, the gift nifty, that's suggesting a bit of a flattish start, as flat as can be. But uh, rest assured, as we have seen in the last many days, we'll swing one of the two ways. So let's see how that goes. But we're still in conversation with uh, Devin Choksi. Uh, Devin, I wanted to ask you about uh, Dixon Technologies. You know, the stock had a big run, more than 50%, I think, in the last uh, few months. But Jefferies has come out of the note and they've downgraded the stock. A couple of reasons that they highlight is the stock is now trading at close to around 60 times its forward earnings. And the second factor is bulk of their book is towards OEM, that's 75%, which is lower margins. How do you approach the stock from these levels? Bulk of the good news in the price or is there more in store? Yeah, I think the second point I think which you referred in the note of Jefferies, I think that is uh, more obvious and I think that is known. So I think I just not a surprise. And that should not be the reason for downgrading the stock because on this very reason, I think the I think the price picked up. The larger concern remains about uh, the kind of valuation that this particular stock has uh, assumed once again. In my viewpoint, I think if you give stretch valuation and if you mature this valuation ahead of time, possibly I think if the shareholder will not earn the return. The company will continue to make profits because I think they've got the contractual obligations to deliver. So from that perspective, I believe that I think the business will continue to deliver profits. However, I think the valuation remains stretched. And unless I think we have price corrections through time correction, I think we will not see a major rally uh, in this particular stock. That is one thing which is given. Okay, well, you know, that entire pack, Dixon, Amber, Sirma, Keynes, Avalon, I mean, you know, huge moves uh, on the entire pack over the last three months or so. Then uh, stay with us. We're just coming back to you.